Good morning. It's Iowa. It's Iowemala. Looks like the light keeps changing dramatically. So maybe I need to move. That might be better. Hopefully that's better for you. Um, it's Tuesday morning and it's June the 8th and it feels like we're definitely in summer. So it may be officially a little late, but that's how it feels. And summer feels good. It's sticky and hot, but summer feels good. So today, I wanted to continue. I'd like to read a few more essays from Gil Fronsdale's book, The Issue at Hand, because he's uh, he has chapters on uh, the, the Satipatthana Sutta, the Four Foundations of Mindfulness, which is the basis for our practice, our meditation practice. And uh, that's true for for all, all Buddhist, and the first is the body, the first foundation, and the second are the feelings. The the uh, those are more like the sensory feelings and what they generate in the body, and now the third is the mindfulness of emotions and mental perceptions and mental formations. So. I'd like to do this essay as well. So I would like to begin. It's uh, it's good to be here. Good to see all of you, and or to see your names at least. <laughs> so he begins with the his. Uh, this is Dhammapada two fifty one, in his numbering system. There's no fire like that of lust no grasping like that of hate, no snare like that of delusion, no river like that of craving. Mindfulness of emotions. Bringing awareness to our emotions helps us to have straightforward or uncomplicated emotions. No emotion is inappropriate within the field of our mindfulness practice. That's very important to remember. No, you can't have an emotion that's outside the range of being um, inappropriate because our emotions are our emotions, right? They, we are trying to allow them as we are, let me start over. We are trying to allow them to exist as they arise without reactivity, without the additional complication of judgment, evaluation, preferences, aversion, desires, clinging, or resistance. The Buddha once asked a student, if a person is struck by an arrow, is it painful? The student replied, it is. The Buddha then asked, if the person is struck by a second arrow, is that even more painful? The student replied again, Yes, it is. The Buddha then explained, in life we cannot always control the first arrow. However, the second arrow is our reaction to the first. This second arrow is optional. As long as we are alive, we can expect painful experiences, the first arrow. To condemn, judge, criticize, hate, or deny the first arrow is like being struck by the second arrow. Many times, the, many times the first arrow is out of our control, but the arrow of reactivity is not. Often the significant suffering associated with an emotion is not the emotion itself, but the way we relate to it. We can all relate to that sentence, I'm sure. Do we feel it to be unacceptable, justified? Do we hate it, feel pride in it? Are we ashamed of it? Do we tense around it? Are we afraid of how we are feeling? Mindfulness itself does not condemn our reactions. Rather, it is honestly aware of what happens to us and how we react to it. The more cognizant and familiar we are with our reactivity, the more easily we can feel, for example, 
uncomplicated grief or straightforward joy, not mixed up with guilt, anger, remorse, embarrassment, judgment, or other reactions. Freedom in Buddhism is not freedom from emotions. It is freedom from complicating them. There are four aspects to mindfulness of emotions, recognition, naming, acceptance, and investigation. There is no need to practice with all four each time an emotion is present. You can experiment, experiment to find out how they each encourage a non-reactive awareness towards emotions. The first, recognition. A basic principle of mindfulness is that we cannot experience freedom and spaciousness unless we recognize what is happening. Recognizing certain emotions as they arise can sometimes be difficult. We have been taught that some emotions are inappropriate or we are afraid of them or simply don't like them. For example, when I first started practice, I became angry when my practice on retreat didn't go the way I expected it to. But I had an image of myself as someone who was not angry, so I didn't acknowledge the anger. Not until I recognized the anger could the retreat really begin for me. The more we learn to recognize the range of our emotions, including the subtlest ones, the more familiar and comfortable we become with them. As this happens, their grip on us relaxes. Naming. A steady and relaxed mental noting or naming of the emotions of the moment. Joy, anger, frustration, happiness, boredom, contentment, desire, and the like encourages us to stay present with what is central in our experience. Naming is a powerful way to keep us from identifying with strong emotions. There are many ways that we are caught by emotions. We can feel justified in them, condemn them, feel ashamed of them, or enthralled with them. Naming helps us step outside of the identification to a more neutral point of observa observation. It's like this. That's our neutral point, to be able to say, it's like this. Folktales tell of the dragon losing its power when it is named. Likewise, emotions can lose their power over us when they are named. Acceptance. In mindfulness, we simply allow emotions to be present, whatever they may be. This does not mean conditioning or justifying our feelings. Formal meditation practice offers us the extraordinary experience, uh, opportunity, the extraordinary opportunity to practice unconditional acceptance of our emotions. This does not mean expressing emotion but letting emotions move through us without inhibitions, resistance, or encouragement. To facilitate acceptance, we can try to see that the emotion has arisen because certain conditions have come together. For example, if you had a flat tire on the way to work and your boss gave you a new assignment with a tight deadline after you finally arrived, you might feel frustrated or angry. If your boss gave you that same assignment on a morning after you'd had a good night's sleep and heard, about, and heard some great news about your stock options, you might feel excited or challenged. If we can see emotions as arising from a particular, let's see, from a particular set of conditions, we can more easily accept them and not take them personally. And investigation. This entails dropping any fixed ideas we have about an emotion and looking at it afresh. 
emotions are composite events made up of bodily sensations, thoughts, feelings, motivations, and attitudes. Investigation is not abstract analysis. Instead, it is more of a sensory awareness exercise. We feel our way into the present moment experience of the emotions. <clears throat> Particularly useful is the practice of investigating the bodily sensations of an emotion. The correlation between emotions and their physical manifestation is so strong that when we resist or suppress our emotions, we often do the same with sensations in parts of our bodies. Waking up to our body through mindfulness practice also allows us to wake up to our capacity to feel emotions. If we let the body be the container for the emotion, we can more easily disentangle from the thoughts around the emotion, the stories, analysis, or attempts to fix the situation, and simply rest with the present moment experience. Mindfulness of emotions helps us to come to a place where we don't react habitually to our inner urges and emotions. That place is a good foundation from which to look carefully at situations and make wise decisions. The point of Buddhist meditation is not to become emotionally neutral. Through it, we can open up to our full capacity to feel emotions and be sensitive to the world around us and yet not be overwhelmed by what we feel. It's very good. So, mindfulness of emotions. And the next, the next one will be mindfulness of thoughts. Well, then we can keep going. So keep going. <laughs> But I think, I think this is some, one of the most important things we need to be really clear about. Emotions are not a bad thing in the Buddhist teachings. We, we don't own the emotions. They, so we don't have to, with every uh, emotion that we consider negative, we don't have to take ownership of it. But we see it. We need to be aware of it. We need to be able to see it clearly. And that's what happens as we begin to sit and be able to be with the stillness and tranquility. Some of the emotions that we've wanted to suppress will uh, arise and we can look at them from that more balanced place and not have to be afraid of them. We're not expressing them, we're, we're seeing them. Excuse me. And I think what happens to a lot of people in their desire to, you know, they've been searching for something and then they discover that meditation is very powerful and helpful for them. But there can be a tendency to need to, to not want to look at those uh, negative emotional states that arise. They don't want to, they only want to see um, improvement in what's beautiful and what's wonderful and they don't want to see their old stuff coming up but our old stuff will keep coming up until we're able to confront it and then we might be able to just let it go at really seeing it clearly and allowing it just to pass away just like we know our thoughts pass away so that, but the urge to be perfect or to be good or to be right can often cause us to um, move into uh, delusion. So we want, we want the, the emotion we're feeling to have a different meaning than it does. We want to uh, call it something else because we may be ashamed of it or we may be so burdened by it or troubled by it that we don't want to, you know, we're, we're so fearful of it that we want to put it into the context of something else. And so then we're not working with uh, 
with clear seeing. So when those emotions arise and you begin to see them and things arise, just allow them to, to be there. No need to express them, but just see them clearly. And don't be, don't fight it. Don't fight what you're seeing. Uh, it doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you have to keep it and own it and make it uh, be part of who you are because all of these things are impermanent and temporary and we can see it for what it is and uh, sometimes that's all we need to do to allow it to pass, to pass through us. Otherwise we end up being stuck with a lot of all that unfinished emotional stuff and, we, and I think all of us know how that feels too. It's not, not a good feeling. So I think his writing is, is very good, it's very clear. So why don't we sit and enjoy the time we have together. My throat is really dry today. I don't know about the rest of you, but if your allergies are acting up, um, then, then I'll take uh, allergy usually over-the-counter things uh, to help with that and then that dries my throat out and you know everything creates something else so <laughs> so I hope everyone is doing well and your uh, this our gradual reintroduction into well we can't even call it normal normalcy because we don't know what normal is anymore but um, I know every single person is having a different experience of it and uh, every, every business office, every restaurant, every place of business is opening back up. I'm sure there are so many mixed feelings even among the people working in places. Um, so be, try to be very careful, not assuming you know how someone else is feeling, uh, not assuming that you have all the answers about the behind the scenes work somewhere. The, um, I, was, I was having a checkup with, my, with a doctor yesterday in Wisconsin and we were talking about the kind of transition phase we're going through and I'm calling, I'm calling my, per, my current status, I'm in the languishing category. The transition is throwing me off my, what I had become comfortable with during the pandemic. Um, and so we were talking about that and, and uh, she, we, she was saying something about uh, people will come in into, into the clinics, uh, into the examining room and take their mask off. And uh, she's had people say, well, you know, we've all been, we're all safe, we're, this is okay. And she was commenting on how frustrating that is for her. And she tells them, no, put your mask back on, please. There, there are a lot of people in the clinic may, may be chemo patients. And we don't know that. And they may be, they may have uh, very serious, uh, immune system problems. They may be, I, I know people who have other conditions that have even kept them from having the vaccinations. So uh, thinking that, oh, everybody's fine and taking your mask off in a place, especially in a doctor's office or in a clinic or a hospital, taking that, that mask off in a public area is, uh, no, no, it's not the it's not the appropriate behavior. And and that person, the person who did that in her office, probably hadn't even thought about that. They hadn't thought about the people that are at, that are still at great risk from anything. And most of us know that we probably the year that we were masked, when we were all more inside and more uh, isolated, but wearing masks when we went out how many 
of you had a cold or had the flu. I mean, so many, uh, so many people I run into talk about wearing the mask kept them from having a lot of the allergies they have, and um, the, the doctor said the same thing, that that's what they see. People have been much less, much less sick with the common uh, flus and uh, viral things that we typically have over the course of a year. So just be aware that we don't know the situation of other people, so try to be kind. Uh, try to be try to be very mindful about what other people may be experiencing that's different from what you are experiencing and be sensitive to those others and to whatever they're uh, whatever they may be going through and that's always good advice but I think in this time of transition we have to be careful not to make assumptions but take care of yourself be, be sure that you mask up when you need to and uh, be careful where you go if you feel like it's not a safe place just you don't need to go there so why don't we sit for a little bit Just be aware of the body breathing. Be grateful for, be grateful for that breath and for the body taking care of us. Enjoy feeling your body calming down, settling, feel grounded. Enjoy a feeling of contentment and peace. And if you like to, just stay being with your breath, taking in everything around you and inside of you. But if you do feel an emotion arise within you, it may just begin with a feeling that sensory feeling. Allow that emotion to rise, just like our thoughts. 
don't need to push it away. You don't need to try and stop it or repress it. Just allow the emotion to arise. And let yourself investigate. Just look at it more closely. Not trying to fix it or change it or get it to go away. Just being able How does it feel? What does that emotion feel like? Is it unpleasant? Is it an emotion you recognize from many, many, many other situations or occasions? Can you just see it and investigate it with, without a need to express it? then are you able to just let it go? Of course it may come back. Our emotions are not one-shot one shot deals. But if we can understand if we can investigate without trying to fix anything. That could, that could be the recognition that that emotion needs. If you can, just keep sitting. Just give yourself the time you have to just sit with your breath. May everything we do or say or think be done not only for our own benefit, but for the benefit of all living and sentient beings everywhere. And may you be well and safe and content practicing if you can, if you have the time, and uh, it's so, hi Maria, it's good to see, it's good to see all of, it's good for me to get to see all of you, and uh, thank you for sharing in my practice with me. See you on Thursday. <laughs>